Let's look at a program where the timer is used as a counter. What happens when the timer is configured as a counter? It counts external clock pulses instead of counting internal clock pulses and those external clock pulses should be applied to the port 3 pins T1 and T0. T0 for timer 0, T1 for timer 1. And how do you configure the timer to function in counter mode? You should set the corresponding CT bar bit to be equal to 1. When CT bar is equal to 1, external clock pulses will be counted and the operation is called counter operation. Now let's look at the question. Assuming that clock pulses are fed to pin T1, write a program for counter 1 in mode 2 to count the pulses and display the state of TL1 on P2. So the first step in the program is to configure timer 1 as a counter and to select mode 2 for it. So the value that should be loaded into T mode register will be such that the lower nibble will be 0 because timer 0 is not used. And we are using timer 1 so in counter operation it should be used as a counter so the ct bar bit of timer 1 should be equal to 1 and it is also asked in the question that mode 2 should be selected so to select mode 2 m1 m0 should be 1 0 and no external start and stop of counter is required here so the gate bit will be 0 Considering all this, the bit pattern to be moved into TMOD is as shown. It will be 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. In hexadecimal, decimal, the value will be 6, 0, H. So the instruction can be move T mode comma hash 6, 0, H also. The next step is to initialize the timer registers. We have selected mode 2, so we have to initialize the TH1 register only. It is an 8-bit mode, TL1 will count, TH1 will hold the initial count. So we have to initialize TH1 with the initial count. And we are required to count the number of pulses. In the natural world, all counting operations will be from 0. It will start from we will count as 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So the initial count should be 0. So move TH1, comma hash 0 will clear TH1 and that will be the initial count that will be loaded into TL whenever the timer overflows. The next step is to configure T1 as an input port. For that, it should be set high. Set bit P3.5 will set the port pin 3.5 high so that it can act as an input pin. Please look at the diagram. The in clock pulses are applied as input to P3.5. So it has to be configured as an input pin. For that we have used set bit P3.5. Now we are ready to start the timer. The instruction to start timer 1 is set bit TR1. From this instant onwards, the timer will count the external clock pulses. That is, it will function as a counter that counts the pulses applied at T1. Now, it is required in the program that we display the count on P2. For that, we have to copy the contents of the TL register. TL register holds the count. It is the register that counts up. TH is used to hold the initial count. TL is the one that counts and it contains the current value of the count. That has to be sent to port 2. For that, first it should be copied to the accumulator and from the accumulator it has to be sent to port 2. The instructions for that are move a comma TL1 which copies the content of TL1 into the accumulator and move P2 comma A which 
copies the content of the accumulator to port 2. And it is shown in the figure that a set of LEDs are connected at port 2 so that the count becomes visible to the user. The next step is that we are monitoring the overflow flag and as long as the flag is not set, we will continuously send the count to port 2. So the instructions move A comma TL1 and move P2 comma A will be repeated as long as the overflow flag is not set. So the instruction for that is JNB TF1 comma back. Back is the label of the instruction move A comma TL1. So as long as the flag is not set, the count will be displayed on the LEDs. Once the flag is set, we stop the timer and clear the overflow flag. CLR TR1 will stop the counter. CLR TF1 will clear the overflow flag. Then we are repeating these steps again. So S jump again, again is where you start the timer again. And this continues. Uh, instead of writing the instruction S jump again, we can also write some code so that a message is being displayed. That uh, suppose uh, imagine that this is the case of a parking lot where you have an infrared sensor which produces a pulse whenever a vehicle enters the parking lot and that is being counted. And suppose when it reaches the maximum count, it means that the parking lot is full. So when the flag is set, it means the maximum capacity has reached. And in that condition, you can display a message showing that the parking lot is full. Instead of S jump again, it ca we can display a message once we have learned the sixth module where you will learn how to display messages using an LCD display. But uh, since we are in the fifth module, we will just repeat those steps. That's why it is written as jump again. So I hope you understood the program. If you ha haven't understood, please call me and clear your doubts. Please learn this program well. Thank you.